a, a lot mm. of factor investing seems to have a sort of value tilt, Greg. Would you agree? And, and can you apply it to growth stocks? Yeah, it's, it's a good question, I think. Uh, so when I, uh, when I took a look at the industry back in the late 90s, you know, I have tremendous respect for all the researchers that pioneered a lot of this work, Merton and Ross and Fama and French and Titman and Carhartt and Sharp. Uh, you know, these are, you know, for us, like the Babe Ruths of finance, right? And, um, but what I found was that almost all of these ideas and strategies that were out there in the 90s and early 2000s were all some form of value investing. As a matter of fact, almost everything we just talked about for the last half hour or so were various forms of value investing. And there were very few, if any, uh, quantitative managers applying these ideas amongst growth stocks. So actually at our firm, we actually launched growth products, which were somewhat unique, um, you know, using a multi-factor approach in growth stocks. And then later, we actually did the same thing in REITs, a global REIT portfolio. We were the, the first multi-factor, really quant global REIT strategy. There are a few others now. Um, these were asset classes that were traditionally filled with fundamental managers that weren't really talking about multi-factor investing. And again, as a point I made earlier, I think what we found was that there are certain factors that work better in things like growth stocks or REITs than they do in value stocks. Uh, I could give examples, the momentum one we talked about earlier, which works quite well in growth stocks. Um, we also found that in REITs, for example, another area where it wasn't popular to be doing this, uh, there was something we came across which was leverage. Um, leverage is a factor that affects the price and returns and risk of REITs. And, uh, we found that by just underweighting leverage, we produced better sharp ratios, better risk-adjusted returns, uh, and combine that in this multi-factor setting where you're also thinking about other things like size and value and how you put these things together. So um, I think there's still a lot of work to be done uh, applying these ideas in growth stocks. Uh, it's definitely not as common. Um, I think that one of the reasons for that is that there's a lot more ambiguity of what the sort of fundamentals and prices are in growth stocks than there are in value stocks. Uh, the dispersion of analyst opinions, uh, the behavioral biases, overconfidence, there's just so many reasons for why it's just not as popular to do this there and why there might be plenty of room to expand on the products and factor research in that area. The, uh, the research that Novi Martz did a few years ago on profitability uh, because I think uh, growth managers were struggling on, you know, how do we find value characteristics in growth stocks when earnings are a little more debatable, book value is a little more debatable. You know, a lot of growth companies don't have book value. They're, they're all like R&D and things like this. Mm -hmm. So I think that profitability research was a good example of the point you're making where it was a way to search for value characteristics uh, in growth stocks and sort of go higher up on the income statement since earnings are so polluted for growth stocks.